Hi everyone, welcome back to Grunty Industries. So there's quite a lot of stuff that I want to get through in this section. A lot of it is some pretty broken stuff as well, so hopefully it will be nice and interesting. Definitely quite a few glitches to show off in this one. So the first thing I'm going to do, oh by the way I should mention that off screen I went and refilled my grenade eggs and my clockwork eggs. I could have done it on screen but there's no point because it's just talking to jam jars at the places where you learn how to use those eggs. So yeah, just thought I should mention that in case the numbers don't add up. So the first thing I'm doing is, as banjo, I'm going to get this battery over here. There's four of these in the level, I'm not going to get all of them, one of them can be skipped and I'm going to show that in this video as well. But the other three are still necessary, they're, or at the very least they're quicker to get, so I'm just going to get them. So I'll just take this back inside. And there's a place on this floor over like in the corner over there where you can use a battery. I'm not going to use this one here. It makes more sense in terms of the route to go and use this one on floor 2 and then get the other battery from floor 2 and bring it back. So I'll go through this little vent that I opened in the previous video. And one thing that's kind of cool about the batteries is you can just like drop them out as long as you're somewhat close to where they're going to go and they'll just shoot across the room and go straight in like that. So this opens another room which we're going to go in later on as the level transformation. Don't have to worry about it for now. Going to head over here and get the next battery as you can see he's just sitting over there. And once again just showing how useful the double jump is. Let's you clear a lot of gaps that you're not really supposed to. Saving a lot of time. Skipping a lot of that shimmy stuff that you're supposed to do. So now that I have this battery I can just kill myself. One good thing about the taxi pack move is that you can die and you won't lose the thing in your bag, it'll just stay there until you actually get rid of it yourself. So I'm just slowly killing myself in the sludge. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to use this one on floor 1 in here, but before I do that I'm going to switch to Kazooie because there's a couple things that I want to take care of outside. So I'm going to do that right now. I need to grab these because I'm going to start actually climbing up the building from the outside. There's actually a pretty tricky jump coming up, hopefully I don't screw it up too many times. These boots only give you a pretty small amount of time to actually get up here, I mean it didn't look too hard there but it actually is pretty tight. So this window right here, you can shoot it open, I'm going to use fire eggs, someone pointed out, or reminded me I should say, that I actually have infinite fire eggs and I'm a dragon so I'm going to be using them whenever I need to like line things up. So anyway what I'm going to do is I'm going to run off and do a backflip in the air and just pretty much hope that I can make it. Okay cool, I did, right, I was really quite worried I wasn't going to there. So the next place I want to go is, I'm just going to beak bomb up because it's a lot quicker. And get my grenade eggs out as well. Because there's a thing over here I need to blow up. Okay, I'll be going in there a little bit later on, but before I do anything else, there's a honeycomb piece right here. It's so hard to land when you're flying, I really think that's one of the major flaws with the controls in this game. Okay. So, I need to make sure I don't land on the wrong side here. There's a warp over here I'm going to hit, because I'm going to be coming back up to the roof quite a few times later on, so... So yeah, just going to enter this thing. It reminds me of Rusty Bucket Bay from the first game, this place. It's the same sort of idea where you break a window on like a slanted thing. So in here you can just jump straight across. Very easy jiggy. I could have got it from that window I suppose, but I think the one I did it from is a little bit faster. So in here is a Jinjo. You're supposed to use, yeah, that's another kind of hint as to what the level transformation is. You're supposed to use that to get in there, but if you position yourself well here, you can see the eggs are going through. So if I just shoot a clockwork in there, like that, I can just pick up the Jinjo that way. And that's a lot quicker than going around the other side. So that's everything I wanted to do with Kazooie for the moment. Just gonna kill myself to quickly return to Banjo. And now I'm gonna get rid of that battery that I picked up before. A little shortcut you can do using the double jump is just to pop in here and then just end up straight up here. You can just stand on top of this and release the battery here and it just automatically will go into the little opening down there. 
which is really cool because it means that during this cutscene you actually fall in, but the loading zone doesn't actually activate until the cutscene's over, which is a little bit lame. But oh well. So there's a bunch of stuff that I want to do in here. The first thing is obviously learn this new move. So the snooze pack pretty much just lets you regain health by sleeping in your backpack like this. Um, it has some pretty limited use. I mean, it'll be useful in pterodactyl land when I finally go back there. So, oh yeah, that's another thing. If you're falling a great distance and you hear him scream, and then you use your backpack attack, you won't take damage when you land, which is pretty cool. So I can pick up this Jinjo using the taxi pack. There's a lot of instances in that in this game, so better get used to that. So over here is, as you can see, an entrance to Hailfire Peaks. So you're normally never supposed to go back through this way. You're supposed to come into this level inside this pipe um, from Hailfire Peaks. And the idea is that you would get behind here and actually, I think you would pick up the Jinjo from there. Is that right? I can't even remember. Or oh, whatever. But there's actually a glitch that you can do to get inside Hailfire Peaks from this side. And it's pretty cool. All you have to do is jump over here. A couple of times, usually. And you just barely touch the loading zone and it pushes you right through here. It's kind of cool because normally to get inside that thing as Banjo you need to use a move that you get in this level. Which is actually the reason I've come here because I want to get that move early. It's going to be useful in Granny Industries. I think. Is it? I don't know. Well it's good to get it early anyway, that's that's the whole point. So here's the icy side of Hailfire Peak. It's not going to spend too much time here. Um, I actually do like this half of the level. I think this one is, is pretty fun. But the other half, the lava side, is probably my least favourite part of the game after Pterodactyl Land. But we're not going to spend too much time here. And now I completely regret freeing Gobi in Witchy World because we need to watch a 10 year long cutscene where he runs into the train station. I'm not sure if he's actually necessary in this game. I can't remember if he gives you a honeycomb piece or not. I think he may only be useful for like activating the train or cooling it down or something like that. Which, funnily enough, I'm going to be skipping when I get to this level. So I guess there was no real point in freeing him, but... Well, he was there and I thought it was the nice thing to do. So as soon as it lets me play his banjo again... I'm going to slide down this hill right in front of me. And here we're going to see some of the worst enemies in the game. These flame hands that come out of the wall. Just need to wait for it because I can't kill it as him. If I had Kazooie I could use uh, ice eggs on it I think and it would just like kill it right away. Fortunately the double jump lets you jump over them but obviously a couple of them do have notes and I have to make sure I get them. I'm just going to use the snooze pack here. I don't like not having full health. And that's one of the level's bosses. One of the level's bosses, I see, because there's actually two. Um, all he really does is shoot flaming rocks at you. The other one shoots, like, icy rocks at you. Really not a threat at all. So, over, actually, I didn't even need to use the snooze pack, because I forgot Jam Jars actually refills your health when you talk to him. So, the shack pack is basically where you walk around underneath your backpack, or something like that. Let's see. It's just this thing. Um, you can fall any distance and not take damage when you're in that move, which is pretty cool. So, hopefully I'm not gonna... Yep, fuck, I screwed it up. I screwed it up. Okay, I'm gonna edit this out because it's gonna take me forever to get back here, as we'll see in a second. Because it takes you all the way back to Grinding Industries, so yeah, editing. So I decided to take the safe way down just because I didn't want to risk dying again. You end up at the same place, so it's no big deal. Just gonna carefully jump across these platforms and land here. And I can just use the snooze pack to heal myself again, so it's no big deal. But I do need to have my health back up. So this next trick I'm gonna do is another pretty cool one. I need to damage boost myself behind this waterfall, which means that I never need to turn it off. Okay, I'm gonna use the snooze pack again. So if I just do a big, long jump out here, hit the lava, and then bounce into the waterfall, it just pushes me straight in, I can get the Jinjo, and I've completed the red Jinjo family, so I get another Jiggy for that, and then I can just kill myself. And as I showed earlier, this just takes you straight back to Grunty Industries.
So I'm going to reunite with Kazooie and I'm going to go back into that area I was just in because there's a couple more things that I can get in there but I need both characters to be there to do it. There's some pretty crazy stuff coming up in just a second. Pretty weird glitch. So if I wanted to I could have also got this Jinjo just by doing the usual this kind of thing. And um but I thought it would be nice to show off using Banjo on on his own to get that one. Because I don't think I've done that yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and get underneath after I kill this thing. I'm gonna try and get underneath this toxic waste. If you touch the surface of it and even Sometimes when you're underneath it, it'll just shoot you straight back out, so you're not really able to go under there. But if you use the Wonder Wing and cancel it as you're falling down, you can get underwater and take rid of this thing. And um, if you just do like a series of weird moves, you can stay there and you won't get pushed back up. So I'm going to do that now. So I'll turn the Wonder Wing on. I'll just turn it off. I'm going to start diving. Oops. Okay, my timing was a little off. That's alright though. Just waiting for the camera to finally catch up. Okay, so then I press Z to get Kazooie out. I just swim for a little bit. I press B, I go into first person mode. And just like that, I can swim about under here. So this Jiggy in here, I want to try and swim to it when like the part that sticks out is facing me. It's a little tricky to time, but if you do it just right, you can actually pick it up without having to get it normally, which is kind of neat. It was a little too late there. This might take me a few tries, it's not the most consistent thing. I really thought I had it that time. The actual trick itself isn't hard, it's just a little... a little lame. Okay, I got it. So, I can just quickly jump out before it throws me out back to the start. And up here, there's another Jiggy I can get. I'm just going to use the usual technique here. Really nothing difficult at all. So that's all I want to get in this place for now. Whoops. Okay, I tried to save myself there. It forces you out whenever you go down there, but whatever. It's no big deal. Okay, so I want to go Banjo. And there's something else for him to get in this room, so I'm going to go and take care of that right now. If you enter the Crusher over here... There's, or the trash compactor, I guess. There's a pretty easy jiggy for him to get in here. Need to wait for this thing to stop talking, though. It takes a little while. So the idea here is that you purposefully take damage and then use the snooze pack to heal yourself so that you don't die. None of that's necessary. You can just use the double jump and pretty easily make it across without taking damage. I mean, you're just barely making it, but it's enough. And this time I want to take damage because I'm going to have to kill myself in a second anyway. So I might as well start it off right now. And Jiggy's just in here. Alright, let's finish it. So I'm going to stay as Banjo for now and I'm going to get the last battery that I'm going to use. As I mentioned earlier, there's four in the level. I'm only going to take advantage of three of those. The fourth one we're going to skip in a pretty cool way, so we'll get to that in a second. I'm going to head up to floor three. This one. And it's right here. The, the reason that we skip the other battery is because it's kind of out of the way, and there's like a cool glitch you can do anyway, which makes it useless, so... Yeah, I think, I don't even remember where the other battery is. It's not outside, I got the outside one. But, whatever. The fact that I can't remember where it is is a testament to how pointless it is to get it. Because if it was easy, then I'd remember it. So I'm just going to take advantage of the double jump again all over the place here just to quickly get up these boxes, except for that one which took forever. Seriously, imagine how slow this would be if I didn't have that move. So here in the boiler plant I can open another area for Kazooie. I mean I think you can do it as BK, you definitely can't just do it as Banjo. But um, it's easiest as Kazooie because you have to be really quick in it. 
in the packing room. So I'm just going to stand in this and just let my battery out, and it's going to jump across the room, as it always does. So I'm just going to switch straight back to Kazooie now, because there's like a little warp right there. Okay, so I'm going to head back to the roof now. So I'm going to enter that pipe that I opened up earlier with the grenade egg. Actually, I'm just going to turn around first so I can actually see what I'm doing. First person mode always helps. Could have beak bombed in there, but I just want to play it a little bit safe and make sure I don't hurt myself. So this takes you to the boiler plant as well, and it puts you up here where there's a Jinjo. It just means I don't have to use a clockwork egg to get it. So I'm going to head in here and take care of this little mini game. So the idea here is that you pick up the Twinklies, which are those little Christmas decorations from the first game. Um, it's pretty easy if you use the running shoes, which I'm going to. I think it is possible without them, but it's it's much easier if you use them. So yeah, just the usual rules. Red ones are worth one, green are worth two, blue is worth three. We're already all sick of that by now. And the idea is that your score will go up when you deposit them in those little boxes over there. So the idea, the best way to do it is just to get as many as you can before the time gets to the like maybe the last 10 seconds or so and just drop them all in at once. I think you have to get 50 but it's not really it's not really that hard to do. This one's actually a little bit fun. I mean like it's better than most of the mini games where you're just like shooting stuff. It's just a little bit different which is always welcomed. So in a couple seconds I'm going to go and deposit them all and just pray that I've got over 50. I'll get this blue one then I'll go. Oh, nope. Shit. Okay, I did it. Just barely made it. If it was 50 that is. It could have been 40, I can't remember. Do I want to play again? Of course I don't want to play again. Why would I? There was nothing interesting about that game. So I'm going to reunite with Banjo again, who is just right here. And in this level there's a couple things in the ground that you can unscrew using Kazooie's beak, which I think is a little cruel. It's kind of morbid that they did it this way, but I suppose it is animated so it's still just a big joke. But yeah, this loosens something later on. As you can see it's for Mumbo. We'll be taking care of all of Mumbo's stuff a little bit later on. I mean, this must really hurt Kazooie's face. And it lags a lot when you do this as well. Like that, it looks like the game's frozen. It looks like the cartridge has come out a little bit and the game's just frozen. So up here, there's a quick shortcut back to the very start of the level, which I'm going to take. If I can just hit this switch. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that when you do a ground pound you're invincible afterwards to fall down a really really long distance. That was a little weird but okay we're back at the start now. I never knew that this was actually like a, an elevator when I first played this game. I thought this was just like a window because I don't know I never thought to go in. Anyway, so now that I'm back here where do I want to go? I want to go back outside, back to the roof. That's where I want to go. Yeah, there's going to be quite a lot of visiting the roof just because of the fact that there's like a flight pad there. Which makes getting around the outside really quick and easy. Okay, so I'm just going to fly down. Get my fire eggs out because I've got infinite of them. And in here is another one of those things that you can unscrew. This one's also necessary for the quest later on in the level where you're supposed to use the transformation to clean all the rabbit clothes. So let's get on with that. Oh come on, how did I possibly miss that? There's just no way. This particular thing that I'm doing right now with the thing in the ground, this one kinda feels like it might be skippable one day. Like if you could make that jump that you saw on the first floor, 
without this extra platform. Like, you just barely miss it, as I recall, so... If you could do it without this platform, then that'd be a nice little time saver. Okay, so back outside. I'm going to take to the air again. And there's another Genjo hiding inside this thing over to the right, so I'm going to go and get that. Where is he? He's up here. Let's just get straight out of the air, actually. I'm just going to use our usual technique. Egg. And... I was going to say crouch stab. I'm too used to Zelda, but the Z and B move. So there's a platform all the way around there. If I time this jump just right... I should be able to make it. Okay, cool. So I'm going to head up to floor 4. I don't... Floor 4? Yeah, okay, I did say that right. I don't think I've been in this part of the building yet. And this is where I'm going to skip the fourth battery. So over here is the exit for quality control, or not really the exit, but like the sort of back entrance, I guess, where you're supposed to go in with the level's transformation. It only opens for mechanical personnel, so we can't obviously do it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire myself through that little crack, just like I did when I was entering the level, so it's more clockwork stuff. So to line this up. I swear, lining it up is like the hardest part. Okay, so the eggs are safely going through. And I just screwed it up because I forgot I need to be in Talon Trot. That's okay, I can just turn around like this. So yeah, I'm going to line it up in Talon Trot. I'm going to come out of Talon Trot. I'm going to change the grenades. And this next part is going to happen really, really quick. That's assuming I get it the first try as well. I'm going to shoot an egg out backwards. I'm quickly going to go into Talon Trot. I'm going to pull out the clockwork eggs and I'm going to fire one in. And if it all goes as I've planned, then the Clockwork Egg will hit the loading zone and Banjo and Kazooie will take damage from the Grenade Egg during that time and it will force them to go through the door instead of the Clockwork, so let's try it. Oh, oh I screwed it up. I went, I went past the Clockwork Eggs. That's okay though. I've got lots of eggs to play around with. And this one's definitely harder than the one that I used to get in the level as well. So... I would expect it to take a couple tries. But yeah, like I said, finding the positioning is probably the hardest part of this. Okay, cool, got it. So as you saw, I took damage while the little jiggy thing was coming in. And this forces Banjo and Kazooie through this door. I actually can't get back out of this way. And this is where the jiggy for this section lands. I'm going to get it from this side. So you're supposed to just hit these, you hit the blue ones whenever you see them. I think there's like eight or something between them. And they like come in quicker each time. I think I just missed the last cycle there. So yeah, pretty easy challenge. It's a little harder from the other side because like they're much higher up than you are. I guess you have to time your eggs a little bit better. It's a bit easier here. The trouble is if you screw it up, it's a little harder to get out of the room from this side. You have to climb over the conveyor belt. I think there's like two more. Okay, cool. And I'm already on the side that the Jiggy's on, so I can just pick that up straight away. And there's a Minjo here, he's just out to get me so I don't have to bother with him. He is a Minjo, right? Yeah, he is. So just to prove that I actually did skip the battery there, I'm going to pop back outside. Here's a fairly useless room. That's All that's in here is the cables, there's nothing else. Pretty easy to get over. And as you can see, I'm walking straight through the door that I didn't have to open. So yeah, that's pretty much Banjo 2 in a nutshell right there. With um with all this clockwork stuff. So that's gonna be it for this video guys. I'll see you in the next one and I'm gonna try and do a lot more grunting industries in that one. We're getting probably about the halfway point in this level, maybe a little bit further. In fact let's just see how many jiggies I've got, because I can't even remember. Okay, <laughs> okay, we're obviously much further than halfway. I think it'll be one more video or so in here. But um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.